Hey tribe, welcome to HD Designs Crochet, HDDC. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about crochet, that yarny goodness and being a crochet designer. So I am a full-time crochet designer. I am in Leicester in the United Kingdom and this is my yarn room. It has got all the good stuff in here. And today I'm going to do my sit down vlog. I'm going to have a nice chat with you all about December 2021 and 2021 as a whole. So the things I've made, the things I've designed, the things I'm still working on, um, the good bits, the bad bits and plans, dreams and hopes and prayers for 2022. So if you are brand new hi hello and welcome to the channel and if you're returning welcome back tribe what's good what's happening um wherever you are i hope that you've had a very merry christmas a very happy holidays and that you have a lovely lovely new year i have so much news to share with you and normally i would put that sort of life update stuff at the end um, but you're going to need to know the life updates for WIPs projects and 2022 to make sense. So I'm going to tell you all the good stuff. You also look like you're on the wonk. Let me sort that out. So life updates um, so that all of my projects make sense. Life update number one, big news. I got engaged. Brad proposed in August, 2021. And at the time, um, the day he proposed, both of his siblings were receiving their gender scans because both his sister and sister-in-law are pregnant. So we decided to keep it quiet. And also I was still recovering from that dirty virus that unfortunately I managed to catch and um i didn't have my ring at that point so we kept it quiet from most of the public really um and i haven't actually posted about it anywhere brad and i didn't post about it until um a couple of weeks ago in december so it's brand new news for everyone pretty much and then we decided to elope. So our second lot of news, my second life update is I'm now married. I have two rings on my ring finger. Um, so the, let's separate them. The sparkly one is my engagement and the plain one is my wedding band. And um, we decided that we were going to elope. We went, we went to the Cotswolds, which, which is down south. Oh, Compared to where we are, it's down south in um, the UK and it was lovely and picturesque. And we went to a um, venue called Twinings Park and it's a riverside um, sort of stately home. And we hired the entire venue and we had it to ourselves and just Brad and I went along. We decided that the most important thing was for us two to be there and that... Um, with the way things are at the moment, we weren't sure if we'd be able to have a big party. We weren't sure on whether um, guest numbers and things like that. And we have seen over the last couple of years, plenty of weddings get postponed or altered and whatnot. So with that in mind and a whole host of other factors, we decided to elope. So it's just Brad and I, um, our witnesses was the owner of the venue and also our photographer. We had a lovely ceremony, which was all pre-planned. We planned everything before we got there. Um, and it was just magical and beautiful. We don't have any video, but I have photos. So I'll be putting photos in for you. Um, because we decided last minute to elope, there wasn't really the time to make something. So I decided to take the pressure off myself and not wear anything handmade. Um, but we are very, very likely, if not certain, to have a church blessing at some point in the future um, with our friends and family, which would be a bit more traditional. And I will wear a more traditional wedding dress. Um, and I'll, 
I have plans for things I'd like to make for then. So I actually wore a sparkly sequin suit from ASOS that I picked up in the sale um, and then my flowers. I really, really wanted sunflowers. I really wanted something colourful. But because we had a November wedding, they were out of season. So I actually had artificial flowers and I've got them. I've kept them safe. And when we have our blessing, I will use the same flowers. And it was just it was just beautiful and magical. And it was so wonderful. Um, and <laughs> I think the main feedback we've had from people is that they would never elope and that's entirely up to you everybody is different every relationship is different and um, what did our families think we had their blessings pretty sure that my parents knew that I would just run off and do whatever I wanted to do and so they were just not surprised in the slightest but they also had given their blessing beforehand and said um if you want to just go and do it and go ahead um because we wanted to plan a last minute wedding but trying to arrange a last minute wedding with a large number of guests means that they don't have much time and usually people like to know about these events well in advance not like the couple of months that we were going to give um getting the availability at venues and then also as i said both brad's siblings are expecting and the time that we be getting married they were due to give birth and would they be there wouldn't they be there what would they wear and it just started to become like a whole load of factors and so we just took all of that away and it looped 110 percent recommend if that's what you want to do go do it i think the only other question i really got was about my outfit i decided to wear something just completely different because not many people elope so I figured why not make it different and I feel like that outfit was just head to toe me so absolutely loved it um if we didn't have the blessing that we are going to have at some point in the future then maybe I would have gone for a wedding dress just because I would like to wear one um but everyone's plans are different so that then takes us to news number three the one that i'm so excited to share and that tribe brings me to my third announcement the news i'm really excited to share and i'm going to show you that share that with you by showing you a finished object it's a tiny baby sock for baby taylor as I'm expecting and I am due in June 2022 and this is the first item that I made for baby. So I found out in um, October that I was expecting and before anybody comments it's not the reason why we rushed off to get married. Um, had we not have been pregnant we were still planning on getting married extremely quickly please please don't comment with i knew there was a reason why he got married so quick because brad didn't just marry me because i'm pregnant he married me because he loves me and it's something that we wanted to do anyway when we started dating we spoke about engagements and um because of my age because of my beliefs i didn't want to be engaged for a long time and it was time that we got married and so we went and did that but I found out in October that I am expecting and it's been quite tough um it's been really really tough I have had um a diagnosis of hyperemesis for anyone that's not aware hyperemesis is a pregnancy complication it's in essence um an extreme form of morning sickness where you are sick 20 plus times a day you can't keep food down you can't keep water down and um, ginger biscuits do not work and frankly i'm sick of hearing that and um it can lead to malnutrition it can lead to dehydration it can lead to esophagus damage from the amount that you are vomiting it can lead to organ failure and organ damage and 
um, quite a lot of women that have high premises have lasting physical damage as well as mental, emotional, financial damage afterwards. And I found out I was pregnant very early October purely because I had really, really strong nausea and I wasn't sure what it was from. Um, and so I started to suffer with nausea at four weeks and at five weeks the vomiting started um it's something that i definitely want to share more on and go into more in depth and i'll definitely be sharing more on instagram because it's something that i really want to raise more awareness of and um just share how it's impacted me and also that pregnancy isn't always rosy um and just to normalize the darker side of these normal things to be honest when I got to 14 weeks um the hospital stepped in and um between the hospital and my GP I was prescribed some strong anti-sickness tablets which has made a huge huge difference um to my quality of life so in a nutshell prior to these tablets I was vomiting anywhere between 15 to 20 times a day um, I couldn't even, if I sipped water, it would come back up. Nothing, nothing made a difference. I tried um, the acupuncture wristbands, I tried eating small and often, I tried eating dry food, ginger biscuits, crackers, I tried eating things that didn't have a smell, eliminating all smells, um, just I tried everything. I googled the heck out of this because it was having such a huge, huge impact and nothing made a difference. To the point where um, the doctors said that I was dehydrated and they finally stepped in and now that I'm on these tablets I can drive again because I was um, having really bad dizzy fits, I was throwing up without any notice and if you try and drive over a roundabout whilst throwing up, that's dangerous. Um, and so I lost my freedom in that I couldn't be far from either the bathroom or a sick bowl. As soon as I moved from my bed, I would start heaving and sometimes the heaving would mean that I would vomit, sometimes I would just be dry, he dry heaving it was just, I felt so, so trapped and so unbelievably ill and it just felt never ending. And I know that because I had COVID beforehand and then I was ill for like eight weeks with that to then go into high premises. Um, although I was at that point 14 weeks pregnant and had been struggling since week five, you add on the eight weeks prior to that of having COVID and it just felt like I'd spent the entire year ill it meant that like i couldn't i just i couldn't do anything if i went in the car i got motion sickness if i tried to knit i got motion sickness from following the movement if i moved i started to be sick if i didn't move then my body ached all over because i just wasn't using my muscles the weight was dropping off me just it's just horrendous and vile and please nobody comment below about how you might have had ginger biscuits that fit fixed you because <sighs> I'm sick of hearing it so I felt really really lonely and really really stuck at home um and then because I was unable to do anything Brad was working extra hours to make sure everything was covered so he'd be out the house 12 hours a day six days a week and then he'd rush straight back to me and then he'd take Albie out he'd do the food shopping he'd cook if it, if well, he needed food I couldn't it got that bad that I had to be upstairs with the all the doors shut in the house with the bedroom window wide open and he'd have the back door open the extractor fan on because if I even smelt the slightest bit of food I would just vomit again and then people be like it doesn't matter if you vomit keep eating but it does matter if you vomit because if you eat and then within two minutes you vomit again like you're not taking anything in um, and it's not from lack of trying like physically your body is on strike um, I know there's a little bit of research into high premises and that 
there's a link between a hormone and a chemical within your body that causes a high level of sickness um, which is why quite often the sickness tablets that you are placed on are that those that they're also used for cancer patients and that the sickness level in cancer patients when they go through radiotherapy chemotherapy is at level one and in women with hyperemesis it's five times that amount which is why when somebody says try ginger biscuits like it doesn't work because your body is just struggling so much anyway i will come back on that at some point but um I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't knit, I couldn't crochet, I couldn't look at a screen. I just, any light, any noise, anything would just set me off. And so I literally just lay there in like a half slouched position. There was one, if I, there's a certain position on my left that if I got into, 80% of the time I wouldn't vomit. But then it meant that as soon as I had to get up to go to the toilet or just the slightest movement, bread rolling over in bed I'd vomit again um but thankfully I got these tablets at 14 weeks and it made a huge huge difference it has made a huge huge difference um and now I can keep food down um I can keep drinks down the heaving has like 80% gone and it's no longer like completely restrictive or stopping my life um Panic attacks have stopped because for the last week, panic attacks started because I just, I couldn't do anything, go anywhere. It was so humiliating. Like, even to get in the shower, I was vomiting while showering. Um, and I just felt so trapped by it. Like, I, I can't even explain it. I got the tablets and that was two weeks ago. It'll be three weeks this Friday and today is Tuesday. And I finally could start to knit and this is the first thing that I made and it is a tiny newborn sock I will put the pattern details below it's a free pattern I have used this yarn by Mr B Bird Street yarn I think this one is called sugar and maple and it's named after their Jack Daniels um colorways I've got a couple of them I want a couple more now and I absolutely love, can you see that amber and the purplish flex? Absolutely love it. And it's so dinky. Um, I used 2.25 mil needles for this. Whatever size they recommended, which was um, US one, I definitely used that. Um, it was just super simple to make, super quick. Um, this one, because it was the first time knitting or crocheting and still recovering, it took me days to do this one. And now it's like a couple of hours. Um, I learned how to do the German twisted cast on. It's like a really stretchy cast on so that you've got a lot of extra give. And I just adore them. They're so, so cute. We are keeping the gender as a surprise and so everything is going to be gender neutral and um, I'm going for these really like biscuity tones so caramels, um, chocolatey browns, taupe, oatmeal, beiges, anything on like the brown to beige spectrum um, with a little bit of rust in there like a little pop of orange, nothing too bright. Um, I'm really really liking forest green greys a little bit of navy but mainly the browns um so in my project bag my harry potter project bag gifted to me by josie rose um also covered in pins i have got a matching pair for the tiny newborn socks and I actually, although I ticked off the rows, I managed to make one slightly bigger than the other, but I have a suspicion it's because the first one I was probably yanking tight because I didn't feel so good. And the second one I was feeling much better. So we've got a tiny little pair of socks. Love them. I also made another pair in um, this yarn. which is Drops 
yarn and it's just a off-white colour. The only thing with these ones is because this is like um, merino, beautiful, beautiful, soft, luxurious yarn, these feel a little bit scratchy um, and I don't think I'd want them on baby skin. So these will probably go over their onesie um, just to keep their feet extra warm. And then there's these, which I've shown you a million times, but I love. So there's two pairs of baby socks and I need a little um, box that I put all of the baby stuff into so that I'm not carrying it all around. Um, I won't carry on showing you in there because it's whips. I used the Mr. B yarn to make a jumper. So this is a flax light. It's a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. And I used the Mr. B yarn. You can really see the colors in this one. It's absolutely beautiful. I used a stretchy cast on and a stretchy bind off. I don't think I used a stretchy bind off on there, but I did on the cuffs. And you can see how stretchy it is in comparison. So let me show you. It's so cute. I love the colours. Um, it's not been blocked. It needs all its ends weaving in and it needs to be blocked. Um, what I'm going to do is save up a few of them and then have a big blocking party all together. Um, so for now, it's a finished object, but it's not blocked. It's got this garter ridge detail down the sleeves um, and other than that it's quite plain but it worked up really really fast um, helped by the fact that I was really enjoying seeing the colours come through and just enjoying being able to make something for baby so ooh, I actually have 37 grams of this left and I had 100 grams of it so I've made the flax light a pair of socks and then I've got 37 grams left um so I'm either going to mix that in with some other scraps to make a striped flax or I might make more socks or I don't know I've put it to one side I've got like yarns that I've assigned to baby stuff um, and once I've made a couple more items then I will uh, decide what I want to do so this pattern is a free pattern and it's um, top down and I've never done a top down knitted pattern before so that was really good to try and also because it was a baby knit it worked up really fast so that was cool. Um, I would make another one, the only thing I'd like to maybe do is I probably will make another one. I might make the size bigger because baby's due in June um, and then, so they're not going to need their winter stuff until December. So what I've done is I've created a list, which I will show you, of all of the patterns that I want to make and the yarn that I'm going to use. Um, and I've also selected the sizes. So anything that's like a winter pattern, something that's heavier that maybe uses Aran, um, I'm making at least in three to six months or six months plus um, and then anything that is the four ply I'm making in the smaller size um, I don't obviously you don't know because baby could come and be huge or baby could arrive and be tiny so I'm just trying to make a good mix of things but the winter stuff is better to have it bigger because they can grow into it then right and I might get a second winter I won't get a second winter but you know it will last the whole of winter so so far that is my finished objects and they're all baby stuff um it's so cute so that takes me into whips because as I said, between COVID and high premises, I have not been knitting, crocheting or anything other than just surviving. Um, and it's only the last week or so 
but I've really started to feel like me, started to go on walks again, get out of the house. Um, so this is the little bundle of stuff that I've finished. But I have my list. So in this folder is everything HDDC related. Um, it was a simple display book from Wilkinson's. I'm not sure how many wallets are in it, like 26 or something. And I've got all my vision boards for HDDC, um, the patterns that I plan to release from 2022 onwards. And then I've got all the patterns that I want to make um, that I've purchased or downloaded from other makers. And I've got the um, colour board for Baby Taylor, everything's here. And then I've got our scan and some of the free patterns or patterns that I've purchased already um, that I wanted to make, I've put them in here as well. And what I've done is I've made a list of um, things that I want to make. So at the bottom is all of the pictures of the items. And then in the list I have got um, things like the maple overalls. Um, and again, I'll link all of these patterns below. That's the maple overalls. I will try and put pictures on screen and make sure everything's linked for you. Um, I really, really want to make them. And I've also got um, the flax, which I've already made. I've got a couple of blankets, the socks and some booties. Um, and then an Aran pattern and then the rest I intend to design myself. So I've got that list and the reason I made a list is because it's very easy to find projects and then when it comes to starting something else, go looking for inspiration, get completely sidetracked. Um, and so to try and keep myself on um, track, not only with the colour scheme that I've picked, um, but also with the amazing patterns I've already found, that's the way I work. Um, a little bit like picking your make nine, I guess, and having a list there to refer back to. And then I've already researched all of the yarn that I want to use so that I can just order it when I'm ready. And um, I've got a couple of my own designs at the moment that I'm finishing off. And as soon as they're done, I'm gonna get the yarn and the pattern and start the overalls. And that's really spurring me on. So into whips now. Early in October, when I found out I was expecting, I wanted to straight away start making things. Um, and so I got this vintage Aran pattern. I'll link it for you because it's on Etsy. I immediately downloaded that um, and I made the back panel, uh, which I'll show you. I absolutely love Aran knitting patterns. Um, I made one for myself. I've got another one that's a work in progress and I love wearing cabled stuff. This is shop bought, but I just love it. And so I got this and it's super cute. And we actually went away for a week, um, mid October. And so I started this and that was before the sickness got really bad. Um, and I actually started the sleeves as well. But that's when the, kick, the sickness kicked in and I couldn't go back to this project for quite some time because every time I picked it up, I associated it with vomiting. Um, and I think I speak for quite a few makers when I say that when you pick a project up, you can envisage where you were, what you were going through in your life and you put memories into your patterns and your projects. And that was certainly the case for this one. Um, and I was considering frogging it, but I feel like I can continue with it now. So that's the back panel of the card again. It's got um, like a twisted stitch here. It's got a cable. It's got the popcorn stitch and it's mirrored and it's so, so cute. Um, I picked the... pretty sure I picked the knot to three months which is another reason why I was thinking of frogging it because it would make more sense to do the three to six or the six to twelve so that um baby had a bigger size and it'd be ready for winter 
but what I think I might do is make this size um, and then hopefully they'll get to wear it a couple of times um, because even though they're going to be a summer baby it doesn't mean we're going to have really warm weather um, or they might just need an extra layer sometimes. Sometimes you go places and it's cold because they whack up the aircon. So I think I'm going to continue with it. Um, it's just cute. But I also will be remaking this in the 6 to 12 month size as well. So that come winter they've got a really decent one to wear. Plus when they are born I will see what size they are and then I kind of know whether the stuff that I've made, whether it's ever going to fit them or if I need more. Um, so I've also started the sleeves and that just needs half the sleeves and the two fronts and that will be finished. And again, as I said, I feel like I can start to face that now. So I will do. Um, here are the sleeves. I just started to decrease it and then it all became too much and I was doing them two at a time as well so they'd be identical and they would just be finished. Um, the only reason I haven't gone back to them at the moment is because the needle size I use I was using for a swatch but that has now been freed up um, so I'll put some work in on these. The yarn that I'm using so this is living in the project bag that my friend Nicole made, who's also made socks for Baby Taylor. The yarn I'm using is this big ball of Aran. It's an off-white and I think it was like Audi or something. And so it's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. And it's just, again, a really nice neutral colour and like timeless. Um, because I'm hoping that by making neutral clothing that if I have any more children in the future, they'll be able to wear the items. Um, if not, then I will be saving a certain amount of them so that when my child is older, they can put their children, my grandchildren, in my hand knits. So that's the pattern. I chose to go with the cardigan because I know that it's easier to get cardigans on than jumpers for babies and these need a cute box i actually did get a really big box delivered that had my wellington boots in um for my birthday and so i might put a nice layer of tissue paper in there and start putting all of the baby knits in um ready for uh, getting baby's um little dressing area ready so in terms of other whips i've got loads of swatches with me in here um i as i said i'm obsessed with aaron and i've been swatching for my own design and you will have seen the vlog um that's gone up before this one where i dive all into this and i talk all about it so i'm not going to go into that in huge detail today um other whips are crochet wise i've got loads um oh i didn't show you a finished object Another finished object is these socks that I designed. These are called Festivities. It's a crochet sock using double knit yarn. The yarn here was gifted to me by Siobhan's Crafts and it's her hand dyed yarn and we... I've got hair on me. Get off. Albus. She sent me this yarn and asked me to design a sock pattern feel like I really delivered on this one and um, I made the second size and I used I had 150 grams and I've got some leftovers and I just love them so the Christmas colorway is rocking around the Christmas tree and the red is Rudolph's nose and they are using a four mil hook really really quick really really easy to make um and i've released the pattern on my website ravelry etsy i think it might be on love crafts as well um and the pattern also went out with um siobhan's boxes that she put together so you got the yarn you got the pattern you got a themed hook as well 
um i haven't worn them yet because i'm saving them for christmas day but i also wanted to take some more photos in them um but they are gorgeous and i love the frill i don't want to add frill to baby socks because i don't know if i've got a boy or a girl um but i think once they're here i'll be making a baby version of these for sure so yes that's another finished object and it is crochet there isn't a lot of crochet to show you just because um knitting is a little bit more baby friendly and you've seen a lot of my crochet whips because i've shown you them previously and i'm just finishing them off so that i can release them so you can finally make them crochet whips that i haven't shown you is this one now this is a huge scrap yarn scarf that i've made i used 300 grams of black and then i used 300 grams of black dk and then random bits of my scraps and it's a absolutely ginormous scarf which is super long super snuggly it just needs tassels on the end and i need to post on instagram and get some help because i don't know whether to do tassels like fringing or pom-poms do i just put a giant pom-pom on each end or do i do fringing if i do fringing do i do one black and then one colorful tassel or do i make the tassels multicolored like i'm not sure and because i'm not sure i've basically left this for ages um like a month so what do you think this is going to be a free pattern so if you wanted to start making yourself one um i used a eight mil hook two strands of double knit held together one is black one is the colorful using the magic knot and i think it's 36 stitches wide and i used the half treble crochet or the half double crochet depending on whether you use uk or us terminology and it's going to be a free pattern at some point it's just a really nice um warm scarf and i don't actually go out anymore what with being ill and what with the stay at home and all of the rest of it um but i thought if you are somebody who commutes or maybe steps out the house a little bit more regularly than me this is just something really nice to have to wrap around especially in the in-between seasons like um spring or autumn because you could like layer this so you could have like a jumper a denim jacket and then this and be really warm or in the winter it would just help keep the chill off your neck and chest um so yeah i don't know what to do to finish it off fringing tassels pom-poms multicolored Ugh. so that is the only crochet whip i'm going to show you today i'm going to try and fold it up because black yarn attracts albie's hair so quickly like can you see just by putting that on the amount of hair that is now on my jumper to the point where it's actually starting to t stop me using black yarn because i'm so hairy from albie afterwards um so yes i also have um a couple of crochet jumpers on the go and they are lined up to be released january and february so i'm beavering away on those in the background did i get it got it so the other crochet whip is up there you can see there is a granny square blanket that i started originally i was going to use it as a wrap and line it with like um a faux fur to wear at our elopement um but then i changed my mind because i just felt like there was too much going on so instead that is was then going to be a throw for our bed so i'm either going to 
continue and make it into the throw for our bed or make it as one of my baby blankets. And before anyone says, I know that crochet, um, you have to watch the little one's fingers because they can cut off the circulation by wrapping their fingers in the crochet blanket. So that blanket would be more for show that I would put on their crib for staged photos and they wouldn't get that until they're much older. But I can't not make them a crochet blanket because this is me and they need granny squares. Um, but again, I haven't really touched that because I've only had the last couple of weeks. Um, it's been all about the little socks. So that's everything that I have to show you knitting and crochet content wise. Um, I did receive a gift, which was a crochet book and it's downstairs. I will show you that next time. It's the Harry Potter crochet magic because I already have the knitting magic. Um, other than that, I haven't added to my stash. Um, other than the mohair that is here that I got for the other whip that you've already seen. Um, I'm still stash busting and that is something I'm going to continue into 2022. Um, so I have assigned any yarns that I've got that I can to baby makes and the rest to samples. Um, I will still be keeping my double knit stash and I'll be adding to that. But I really want to use up my iron weight and my four ply um just to make space for more yarn because my tastes have changed and also just so i don't have that much um because i am going to have a shed built in the garden which is going to be my home office and then this room eventually will be baby's bedroom when they're a bit older and have their own room all in all 2021 has been a huge huge year it's the year that I went full-time self-employed, full-time with HGDC. Um, I quit my previous career. I also moved in with Brad. We've got engaged, we've got married, we have a baby on the way. We also got a dog um, who now is over a year old because we got him last January. He was born November last year. And it's just been huge. I feel like throughout my entirety of my 20s, I was working to get to this point in my life and now here I am and it's all happening and it's amazing. Um, it also has had its own difficulties. Um, who hasn't been impacted by the pandemic? Who hasn't been impacted by lockdowns and whatnot? And one thing I will say for sure is that I have been hugely, immensely grateful for having patterns and um my workbook and being able to sell them without doing anything so even on my worst days i was still getting notifications that i had made sales and there was a trickle of money coming in and i know that in a couple of years time i will continue to build up those patterns and that trickle will be larger and that will always be there for me and that ah oh, that's just been absolutely huge um and in all of this time that I've had being bed bound, being ill, it has given me some time to really focus on what is important, what it is that I want to do, um, the direction I want to take HDDC in, the direction I want to take my life in, what I want my lifestyle to look like, what's important to me. Um, and so there's going to be so many more things that I add into my life and so many things I make sure that I say no to in 2022. So I can say yes to the things I really want to do. Um, I've had some really, really good ideas for the workbooks. Um, I'm changing the pricing structure. Structure. I am changing the content ever so slightly. Because baby's going to be here, I don't know how much time I will and won't have. And so I wanted to be able to put out content that doesn't need me to check in with it monthly or anything like that. So I've reassessed and i'm really excited for everything i've made my um vision board for hgdc for 2022 it's here i'm gonna keep it private for now manifest it and then show you it at the end and be like i did this i did this i did this i did this and i've done that and i'm excited for it i truly hope and pray for 
good health, security, and just lots of smiles and laughter and love for 2022. Um, and I hope that everybody, all of us are blessed with that. And that I will be doing my bit to make sure that I help with that as well. And I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to you for watching throughout 2021. Um, for the videos that you have liked and commented on. And for all your encouragement to each and every single one of you that have reached out and sent me messages. And that have downloaded my patterns, bought the workbooks. For all of those that have got the workbooks and you are now a designer yourself, like I see you, I salute you, I can't wait to shout about you some more. And just thank you for being here with HDVC, with me and 2022 is gonna be big and I've got lots to share with you. So I think I'm gonna leave it there and um, I will see you in the new year. It won't be a new me, it won't be new HDDC, it will just be more of the good stuff. Um, and also share the not so good stuff because that's life. <laughs> so I will see you in the next video. Have a lovely new year. I hope you've got lots of time to work on your project and whatever it is you want to make. And I'll see you soon. Take care.